Walking backwards is a nice mild traction to the neck. Of course, when we're at the park, we have to see what's behind me. What's behind me? What a good exercise for the neck. It's also good sometimes to move the arms in a rhythmical way from side to side. And it's so nice to walk backwards and do, do just that. You know, it's a fantastic thing. So when I get close to the tree, I look at the tree and I do a few things for my neck. Number one, strengthen my arms. Bend and straighten my elbows. Push against the tree. And then look at the tree. I'm doing a few things by looking at the tree. First of all, my eyes stretch. And as my eyes stretch, it helps my neck to stretch, right? Then my eyes look down. That helps for another stretch on my neck. So it's so wonderful the tree is tall and I can just move this way at the tree. I bend and straighten one arm, I bend and straighten the other arm, and it's easier to mobilize myself. Then it's nice for me to go back on the tree like this and have a very nice stretch at the tree and go back and forth. Do you know how wonderful nature is? When you look up, when basically the area is not so flat like your home or like your road, and you can just walk at the tree, uh, sorry, you can walk at the park, and you can um, walk in a in few different areas. Almost every morning, I'm either running on the beach bare feet or walk in the park with shoes that I don't care to keep because it goes to so many areas, including sandy areas. But it is so important that the eyes will roll. And then it's easy to open the jaw and easy to tap on it. Why did I push against the tree? Because of the fact that I need to strengthen my arms if I am to loosen up my neck. There is no way otherwise. You cannot strengthen your, uh, uh, strengthen your neck and loosen up your neck without strong shoulders and arms. Why am I moving myself from side to side like this when I walk? Because it takes the tension away. So remember, taking tension away from neck Taking tension away from shoulders is a continuous work. When you sit at a computer and you squeeze your jaws, you're hurting yourself. I worked with so many people that have problems with hearing by working deeply in their jaws. I worked with so many people that have problems with vision by working on the neck. It is almost useless to work on the eyes alone and on the ears alone without loosening the neck first. And it's almost useless to just work on neck release. You have to work on all the joints, but you have to allow the neck to have different positions than it had before. For example, you can feel that tree and climb and climb one hand above the other and stretch yourself and then stretch your neck backwards and stretch and look at the wonderful sky. What that does to the neck is priceless. Let's go back to nature, even if it's artificially made like a park, and learn how to use the body in a way we didn't use before. Hi everyone, it's so nice to see you and I'm so happy that uh, we didn't bump anyone out of this hearing, that's fantastic. So let me continue where I finished with the trees. I must tell you, I um, used to not have the time before COVID um, to uh, walk among the trees. Boy, I'm so happy I have this time right now. Today was amazing. I was running 
in the fog. We had such dense fog of the beach of San Francisco. Uh, I even missed one of the, my beach when I came back. I had to, I bypassed it and came back. It was so dense, but it was so lovely. So one thing that I want to say that when I run, I often see myself doing this exercise. I often see myself doing this one while running. More than that, I feel that my neck is loose and my legs are loose. When I'm putting my hands on my hips and my waist and run this way. So the separation between the legs and the neck is very important. But we have to give ourselves a sense of support to the neck. Remember, we worked on the foot as a way of supporting the rest of the body. Well, what supports the neck is the chest. So when you move your chest back and forth like this, your chest, middle back, your ribs also, you can move them back and forth this way, and even twist it a little bit forwards and backwards, a little bit forwards, a little bit backwards. When you do that, there's a good support for the neck. And one of the things that we overdo in modern life, and I'm talking about nearly 8 billion people these days on this earth, one of the things that we overdo is basically flexion, narrowing of the neck. Remember from last session, I was talking about the fact that we tend to um, create uh, a flexion and every centimeter that we move forwards is 10 times the effort of the centimeter before. So basically when we bend like this, it's a huge effort, an effort to bend it, but then an effort to hold yourself from falling as you bend it. All this is a lot of work of your muscles. So because we tend to bend, and please try not to, as you sit at a computer, try to more bend this way and not this way. So more forwards, it really helps your neck tremendously and not bend this way. Well, one thing we can do, and I have to take my belt off for this. Um, I will apologize to you if by any, for any stretch of imagination, my uh, trousers will fall down or anything, but this is what I'm doing. I am sitting on the ball, and I really recommend that kind of ball, but you don't have to have it. You can do it differently. You can simply stretch backwards, but I'm sitting on the ball. I'm moving back, and this is a pretty big ball. So I'm kind of short, so to get the floor, so tell me, Rosendo, should I move to the side? Uh, do people see me? They see you, just not your feet. Ah, so they see my arms? They see everything, yes. Okay, good. Maybe I still see this side. Maybe that side. way will be better, yeah. yeah. side will be better. So as I sit on the ball, and then slowly, slowly bend, as you see, I cannot get on the floor. Sometimes I can but not this time. So I stretch myself backwards, and then I can take my head and bring my head up, and I can bring my legs a little bit up, kind of support myself, and move my arms in rotating motion like so. It's such a good feeling of relaxation uh, that it's amazing. The only unrelaxing thing is how my pants are Losing a little bit of weight, so they fall, you know. But anyway, um, I would like to, uh, to, to suggest to all of you to either have a ball like this or push your chest forwards and the uh, uh, <clears throat> middle back upwards and move this way. Of course, we also want to stretch this way. And sometimes, top here, maybe I will take a ball. We have a bonga ball here. Yeah. That's a very nice thing where I can take this ball and top on myself right here as I'm stretching like that. Top on myself right here as I'm stretching like that. Hit myself on my chest. And of course, we can use the fist. It doesn't have to be a bonga ball, you know. And we can really help ourselves to have a better posture. Now, the worst thing that people can do is try and correct their posture for correction's sake. It has to be more that the muscles are becoming even. The muscles that pull you forwards, sideways, backwards, 
they are like forces or vectors. They will pull you all to their direction. And sometimes people are overly bending this way, which is wrong. So it's so important for us to understand what we do on a regular basis and let go of it. So I want to sit against the wall this time, and I want you, Rosanda, to tell me if people see me right now. I think they do. They can still see you. Yeah. So all of you, if you have a wall, it's not clouded. If you have a wall and you can sit against the wall, am I seeing right now? Mm -hmm. Okay. Then sit and be very, very relaxed. How do you know you're relaxed? Don't push against the wall. I mean, you can do it as an exercise to push against the wall. There's nothing wrong with that. But try not to push. Put your hand on your forehead and move your head from side to side. And see that there is no resistance to your movement. And boy, that would be a resistance to the movement. I remember I had a surgery that was done on my um, uh, 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 clavicle. And they told me, don't move your head to that side or you will tear the stitches. I think it took me a month to overcome that restriction I gave to myself. But without knowing, we give ourselves a lot of restrictions. So find what your restriction is. Does your neck allow you to move your head from side to side like so? And you can change hands, but keep moving your head from side to side. Then the next thing that, um, is it any possible for you to put the camera down or you can't? No, I'm here. So, the next thing to do is to bend yourself forward. So, I don't think that you'll see me that well, but what I'm doing is I'm bending like this. But stay at the wall. Stay at the wall as you do it. Okay? And bend forwards and back. Forwards and back. Forwards and back. Hold your legs and move your legs from side to side. And do it with your hands alone. Um, Rosendo, can you please give me the bunker ball? Thank you so much. Okay. You can either tap on your legs or hit yourself with a good bunker ball on your side. Again, we tap. And then we can move the leg to the other side. And we tap. And move your legs from side to side like so. So again, we can grab uh, our hands, put them together, bend forwards and straighten. Bend forwards and straighten. And move your head from side to side. Now, next, open and close your jaw. Open. And close your jaw, but open it as wide as you can. As wide as you can, until you feel your cheeks, your lips open and close. As you move your head from side to side. As you move your head from side to side. Open and close your jaw. Open and close your jaw. That is so important because it's so tight. And now see how it is to move the head from side to side. You have a sense that the neck allows you to do it a little bit easier. So let's continue from here. Move your head all the way to the side. Stick your tongue at your cheek and look at the wall. Move your head all the way to the other side. Stick your tongue at the cheek and look at the wall. Now I move again here and again. The movement has to be very gentle, very slow. You don't 
sharply move it. You just gently move it. Look at the wall, stick your tongue at the cheek, and tap on the other side, starting in the ear, finishing at the shoulder. And by the way, breathe deeply. Don't stop breathing. Now move your head to the other side. Stick the tongue at the cheek. Tap. Look at the wall. And breathe deeply. And move your head from side to side. And the point is, how light does the head feel? Let's try and examine it. You move the head up and down against the wall, up and down in the, or in, in the side, up and down in the middle. And you want to feel whether you feel comfortable moving your head up and down. And if you feel comfortable moving the head. So let's review the exercise. We move, your head, we move the head from side to side, opening and closing the jaw. We stick the tongue at the cheek and look at the wall. We stick the tongue at the cheek and look at the wall. We open and close the mouth. And now we are holding our hands, we're clasping, clasping the fingers and bending forwards. And coming back, bending forwards. Those who cannot do that, just hold under your legs and move forwards. So bend forwards. Then you hold the legs and you move the legs from side to side only with the strength of your hands, not with the strength of your legs. So it's a good with this. And if you slide down, I do too, and everybody else does too. So you move all the way from side to side with your hands. And you breathe deeply and slowly. Now come back up, put the legs to the side, tap. Move the legs to the other side, top, or with your fist. Either way is okay. And now see how easy it is to bend forwards. And indeed it is. And now see how easy it is to move the head from side to side. And how easy it is to move the head from side to side. All right. So that was a good um, exercise. There are many, many others. But I want to move to the jobs as soon as possible. I would prefer to have a chair, please, and we can take the ball out of the room. That would be very nice. Thank you. <clears throat> and I cannot stress enough how important it is for your hearing to loosen up your neck. How important it is, you know, so many people, some of them get crazy from it because I've met some and there is no reason for them to do it. How many people have ringing in their ears on a regular basis? And normally it starts with people in their 50s, but there's some people in their 20s that have ringing in their ears. And that is always a sign of two things, that the muscles between the three bones, the anvil and the stapes, and the finestra, you know, those muscles there, uh, bones there, are becoming very stiff. And the other thing, which I think is very important, is that it shows you that your neck is tight. So let's loosen up the neck. First of all, let's work on the neck this way. You can massage the head like this from, um, from the side to the middle constantly. And 
Now move your head and have a sense of how it feels. There's no way to loosen up the neck without loosening up the jaw. Um, yesterday, no yesterday, last week, I've given you the exercise of massaging your scalp as a way of loosening up the neck. Remember, the, the head becomes light then because it has more blood flow. And when the head feels light, the neck becomes loose. So you basically grab the skin and you massage, you separate between the skull and the skull, the skull and the skull, the skull and the skull, the skull and the skull. You can grab the hair and shake it a little bit. And now you move your head, the rotating motion in both directions. And you can feel that the head is lighter. Tough one is to do this, rub your hands, and at the same time, move your head in rotating motion in both directions. Can you do that, Rosanna? Can you rub your hands? And at the same time, move your head in rotating motion in both directions. Mm -hmm. Doing it just fine. That's great. Now comes the next one. Hold your head with your hands. Thumb underneath the two cavities from the side, you know, the style of Oranen. And now move your head without the help of the neck. And now we're talking business. Very few people can do that. Do this. You move your head with your hands. Isn't that something? Without the neck participating. In my classes, we have people doing it to each other, and then they start, start to slowly release. But you can see how much we need to loosen up the neck. Now, look at the connection between the jaw and the neck. If you clench your jaw, feel how much you have tensed your neck. And if you open your jaw, you also tense your neck. So if we don't loosen up the jaw, we have a problem. Almost everyone with hearing problem, and definitely everyone with vision problem, I emphasize the work on the neck. Because if the neck is loose, more blood flows into the head. They comply with the eye exercise much better. I just had a wonderful session uh, with a client of mine yesterday uh, on Zoom. And when she loosened up her neck, her vision immediately became better more tears come to the eyes as well, by the way, if they're dry, and less tears flow if they're overly wet. There is regulatory mechanism that works way better. So let's work on the jaw. Feel if you open and close your jaw, have a sense. If the jaw allows you to do it, or does it have a mind of its own? Does the jaw allow you to open and close your mouth with your hands without the help of your jaws? Remember, your neck, your head, your eyes, your ears, they all depend on you. So open and close your mouth with your hands. Don't forget to blink and breathe through your nose as you do it. Now, a few things you can do now. Tap on the jaw, then puff your cheeks. Rake your cheeks. Do not decrease them. Just puff them. Keep them really stiff and puff. And rake your cheeks. And now open your mouth and speak out loud, like in Corinthian, like, ah, 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 like this. Open your mouth all the way and speak ah, and tap on your jaw. Ah, 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 ah. I know it sounds crazy, but every, if it's in a class, it sounds even more crazy. Ah, ah, ah. And now open and close your jaw with your hands. Does the jaw allows you a little bit more mobility? 
Now, if he does, see how easy it is to move the head. You know, I had a lady who came to me with an undeveloped uh, inner ear. She was born that way. And she had 10% hearing. And I remember taking an ear pipe and putting it on the ear that had 100% hearing and walking with her to the industry and taking a glove and putting my hand in her mouth and opening her mouth and having her listen to noises, like car noises. Have her look at the car, know the car is coming and listen to the noise. Eventually, it became so fine, fine tuned, I could get her to listen to the static of a heater or a furnace, getting close to it a little bit farther from it in this funny way, a plug in the hearing ear and a glove in the other hand on opening her mouth. And guess what? Her hearing improved to more than 60% hearing in the ear that's supposed to never hear well. Today, I was running on the beach. And I did two things. I plugged my ears with my thumbs. That was easy. When I plugged them like this, it was harder for my left ear to open up. So how you put your thumbs in your ears can make a big difference, but let's all of us do it for, let's say three deep breaths. Listen to your breath while putting your thumbs in your ears. And it sounds like ocean waves or like wind. You know, it is such a good thing to then take the thumbs out and hear a little bit better uh, my voice or the hearing that you have because now you rested the ears maybe for a short time. You don't have much time, but I would really recommend the people who are uh, considering improving the hearing would put the thumb in the ears 10 times a day each time for 30 breaths. But I'm working with you today on the jaw, but just be aware and without loosening up your jaw, and again, let's work a little bit like massaging the cheek. Without loosening up the jaw and without loosening up the neck. And I have many good exercises for the jaw and for the neck in awakening your part of self healing. We just ended the sale, but by itself, it's really an expensive book, $30. Uh, the shipping abroad is very expensive, but it's, it's, uh, it's a book that is like an encyclopedia in a sense but you can definitely work on your jaw and you can definitely work on your neck as we have done last time and as we have done today. To recap, we definitely want to stretch backwards because we slouch forwards way too much and we have to decrease our tendency to slouch forwards. We need to work on our jaw. We need to move the head from side to side against the wall. Remember that we bend forwards, we move the legs from side to side and all that is connected. It shows you how much your um, middle back is connected, how much your uh, hips are connected, and how much the jaw is connected to the head. There are more exercises we can do to create the eyes wet, and we're going to continue this next week when we're going to talk about creating tears in the eyes, uh, helping to reduce the tears that are there if there are too many of them, and creating more tears for dry eyes. That's going to be one of the good things. Just want to mention that sunning, and I'm sure that many of you know the exercise of sunning. In fact, I have a feeling that the vast majority of you knows that exercise. It's so good for the neck. When I sun, let's say that this is uh, the middle of, uh, this is the sun, I move my head all the way from side to side, even if it means pushing the opposite shoulder forward. And so the pupils constrict and they expand. They constrict and they expand and it really loosens up the neck. Another neck relaxing is again, if my son is this ball in front of me, I move my head up and down and allow every portion of my eyes to receive the sun and to rest from the sun. And uh, there are many more exercises in front of the sun, which I feel more comfortable to teach in a long session. And by the way, we'll have one on Sunday the 4th to East West uh, uh, Bookstore, because I used to lecture a lot of time in Mountain View, not far from San Francisco. But 
I want you to know that it is so important for us to endorse the sun, love the sun. Light is a healer. Light helps the immune system. I know that many people don't think that way, but it's a very big power of light. Centronic is a wonderful art that I know nothing about, but I appreciate it. In fact, I've um, interviewed Raymond Gottlieb and we have a YouTube clips of me interviewing him for 12 minutes. And he is uh, Mr. Centronic. He is uh, the dean of the Centronic Association. And some of my best students um, definitely studied Centronic. And I would refer you to them. I know nothing about Centronic, but I know a lot about light. How to adjust to the sky how to adjust to the sun. And today I had a phone call from my wonderful friend, really one of my best friends ever, and student, Aurora Machada from Brazil, from uh, Portugal. And she said that light bothered her. And she lost 95% of her vision due to wrongful surgeries, due, due to wrongful treatment of glaucoma. And I was able to help her keep the last 5%. But two things happened to her. She's not as light sensitive as she was. And that affected her neck to the back. So being in the light and not being affected by the light really helps your neck. Loosening the jaw really helps your neck. Now I'm gonna show you a difficult exercise. I'm sure that most of you will not be able to do it. Don't feel frustrated. It's the first time I'm showing it to you. And in that I'm finishing my part of the session and I'm ready for questions and answers. I'm going to take my chair back, back enough as you can see my feet. And first of all, I will move my feet in rotating motion in both directions. Now, remember this exercise that we rub the hands and move the head in rotating motion in both directions, right? Now, let's do the hard one about it. And this is move your head again. You put your thumb in the cavity here, which is style of forearm, and you move the head in rotating motion in both directions. And now come, and that was hard, right? Now come the hard one. You move your feet in rotating motion, then you move your head in rotating motion in both directions. Now move the head in one side and the feet in the opposite side. The head in one side, how challenging. And by the way, don't forget to tuck in your belly if you do that and drop your elbows as you do that, and be as calm as you can be. And by the way, breathing is not against the law as of yet, so breathe deeply. In and out, in and out. So, I would like to thank you all. Thank you all for participating. I know it was a stimulating session, and I'm here for questions and answers. Okay, let me get that ready. So if anybody will have a question, just go ahead and use the raise hand feature and then I'll ask you to unmute yourself. You know, I see Rachel has a question. Let me see her name. Rachel. Rachel, go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question. Rachel? If not, is anything written? Well, for now there is one written. Yeah, oh. I, uh, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Can okay. I have a question. You told me to palm five times uh, a day. Can I palm two times for a longer period of time? Um, you, I would prefer if you palm five times a day. Uh, what's the benefit? Because, because, because your tension doesn't stop. Look, I palm almost every morning for an hour, but I still need to palm several times during the day. Uh, the benefit is that you take away the stress of, uh, of um, the tension uh, in the middle of the day. Uh, so if you build up tension uh, and the eyes are depleted, it's a good way to nourish them and not to allow them to build up stress. Oh, so you space, you space it out throughout the day. Right, but you can oh. come longer from time to time. That's good. Okay. But it has to be five times or six times a day, definitely. Okay, one more question. When, you look at, when I look at the distance, can I do it at night? 
You look at your... Daytime is better. You can do it at night, but at night it's more like you want to have a sense of the periphery growing. But the daytime, when you look at the distance, and it's good you're bringing it up because when you look at the distance, you also loosen up the neck because there's a contact between the ligament of the lens and the ligament of the neck called ligamentum luce and the ligament of the lens is called the suspensory ligament. When one of them stretches, the other one of them stretches. It's one of the best next releases to look at the distance. Okay. okay. Uh, Madhu, go ahead and ask your question. Um, Samir, last week you talked Hello. about when you move your head and you feel this um, scrunchy noise, it's the calcium that's hardened in there. I'm right? not talking to you. You're not? Okay. <laughs> okay. So um, how, how do you re get rid of those calcium deposits in your head? Well, the most important thing is to create more space in your back with all the exercise we uh, talked about. Yes. As you create more space, more blood comes and melts that calcium and reduces its existence, basically. All right. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Nice to see you. Yes, nice to see you too. Okay, cool. Um, Luciano, go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question. Hi, Hello? thank you. So, here, my name is Luciano Mada. You, you probably met my wife, Bianca. Uh, she went to have the, the sessions with you there in, in California. Um, last uh, month, I had a, a sudden hear loss in, on my right ear and it went down to, to zero. I hear nothing uh, on, my, on my right ear now. Um, so looking at the, the exercises that, that you just showed here, I think that some will, will help me. Um, any other uh, recommendations that you would have? Did you lose your hearing 100% or 99%? 100%. Uh, I recovered after doing some, some of the, the treatment that the, the doctors prescribed. I was able to get another 5% back. Mm -hmm. right. um, and and so then, the, but that's where it, the, the treatment, the regular treatment left me. That's wonderful thing to do is to plug your hearing ear and to listen to loud noise like, uh, you know, Beethoven, uh, or to some moving cars with the ear that doesn't hear. And also it's good to pull the ears this way and massage them this way. So the number one is for something like an hour and a half a day, 20 minutes uh, times five, uh, to plug your strong ear and to listen with the weaker ear. So, sooner or later, they will start to work together. And also the exercise we did now and this way. So the exercise of closing the thumbs either like this or like this and listen to your breath for 30 times, five times a day could make a very big difference. But the main thing is listening with the weak ear. Sooner or later, what happens is uh, some of the hearing goes away because of what happened to the ear but some of the hearing goes away because the brain accepts it. So when you start to get the auditory brain in touch with the area of the hearing that you lost, you start mm -hmm. to get more hearing. Okay, very good. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, cool. And um, a quick question from the chat. Judith asks, can optic polar be cured by these eye exercises? Definitely. Okay, cool. And now, Isan Ortega de Valle, please, um, meet yourself and ask a question. Hello from Madrid, uh, Mayor. Thank you Hi. very much for this uh, content. Um, um, I don't know if it's a destiny or what, but I woke up this morning with a uh, neck pain and it's so harmful, uh, so painful, sorry. Um, you know, I can't uh, move my, my neck to the right. It's uh, painful and I'm wondering if it's in my case um, good uh, a good option to do some exercise that you advise to us first now. of all first of all put a warm towel on your neck and then cold towel to take away the inflammation don't move it much uh, uh, do more other things walk uh, although right now it's night where you are isn't it 
Yes, more or less. But yeah. Yes. So if you feel comfortable walking outside, especially not on uh, cement, but in a park, so maybe tomorrow is a better time to do it. Work on your shoulder, lie on your side, move your shoulder in rotating motion. But I think cold water will make a big difference. Moving your chest back and forth will make a difference. But don't do anything to the neck itself. Uh, let the tension subside before you move your head. Okay, so it's better to um, do nothing and cold water than right. some exercise. Exactly. Okay. And I have one question, but it's from uh, the other, uh, one of the other sessions. Uh, you advise us to us to move uh, our toes in both sides in rotating motion. And I'm uh, trying to do it every morning, but <laughs> you know, I can't uh, move it uh, like this. Uh, like this. Uh, the only movi movement I can do with my toes is like this. <laughs> you start um, you start, right? Yes, but um, I have to do um, well, uh, what I can do until I can move my toes in rotating motion. Here's, or... my, here's my suggestion. Walk uh, barefoot on the beach. Walk with light shoes or thick socks. Just make sure you're not stepping on glass. On grass, okay? Uh, and walking on an uneven surface, especially sand, can really make a big difference in your ability with time to mobilize your toes. And also work on your fingers. Work, it's easier to start and mobilize the fingers and then to kind of impress on the brain that that mobility is possible on your uh, toes as well. And then work on the toes diligently. Most people cannot do it at first. While some people train themselves to be very, very mobile in the toes, you know, the most famous one was Jimi Hendrix, who played the guitar with his toes, which was very fine movement. So we all have it. It's just a question of connecting the brain to it. But it would be better if I, for example, with my hand, uh, help my imagine this is my toe, and uh, with my hand, uh, do it the movement. It would be okay. Or... At first, at first, yeah, at first you can do that, but then create resistance, resistance to your toes and then have the toes move. Because the moment that you even have a little bit of movement in your toes, you loosen up your neck. Okay. okay. But I'll tell you what's a mistake. To try hard to move the toes and tense the rest of the body to do that. Never do that. What you do first, before you move your toes, you tap with your feet against the floor. And then after tapping, then you hold the rest of the toes and you move your toe in rotating motion. So it's like focus on the toes. Do not allow your hips and your legs to be a part of it. You want to separate, to isolate. Okay. Okay, okay. so remember about your neck. Don't push it. Let it move when it moves. Don't fight for it and it will move on its own. And work on your jaw. Or working on your jaw helps the neck. Okay, so thank you very much. My pleasure. Okay, cool. Um, George, go ahead and unmute yourself, sir. Maya, can you hear me? Yes. Hi, oh, George. grand. I'm in San Francisco. I'm very close to where you work, where your place is. Wonderful. And so, yes, thank you for today. I have bunches of questions. And I, I have Meniere syndrome. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. And I had surgery um, on the on the left, so I can't hear on the left at all. And uh, that was the surgery was back in 1982. It was a norectomy, and um, but in the last year and a half to two years, um, I'll, I'll, let's put it this way: things have come back, uh, despite the fact that I'm totally deaf there, and um, including anxiety, massive anxiety, and stomach issues and so forth. I mean, this morning was just dreadful. So I'm wondering, um, what do we have? How familiar are you in the group with Meniere syndrome? And uh, I'm sorry. I'm familiar, and I really oppose the medical treatment of disconnecting one ear and not allowing you to hear with one ear to support yes. create better balance. I think you should work a lot on your diaphragm and work a lot with my breathing exercise. Work with my book, Awakening Your. Body. I have your book. Your book is great. I have the book. So work on the breathing exercises. And if you okay. can come to visit our school, 
and work with us in person unless you're very afraid of the corona. Um, no, 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 that's not a problem with me. I'm fine. Health-wise, I'm fine, but I'm not, I'm not afraid to come into you. And I, well, literally, I live on Twin Peaks, so I'm very close to you. Oh, Twin Peaks is so beautiful, by the way. Love, love yeah, it the is. The city. So if you can come to us and work with us, take some nice walk on the beach. Uh, yeah. Well, it was very foggy, but not cold. It was beautiful. So if you can come to us and work with us, and we can give you some good body work, and loosen you up is going to make a huge difference. Excellent. When is a good time to come in and make an appointment? Just give us a call to 415-665-9574, and we can make an appointment with you today. Fine. Thank you so much, Meyer. Have a great day. We also have online sessions. Yeah. We also, for those who don't live in San Francisco, we also have online sessions. Yeah. Uh, for those who don't live in San Francisco, come to San Francisco. Thank you. There's one more question here. Just answer it. Yeah, sure. Uh, this is from Feliz. Go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question, man. There she is. Hi, Mayor. Good night. Um, and Hi. thank you very much for another great session. Thanks for I was your glasses on. <laughs> well, I wanted to make sure that I see you when, I, when you answer oh. my question. Okay, go for it. Um, so my question is about uh, my neck problems because I think it definitely related to my vision. Uh, I have um, disc hernia, is that how it is called in English? Yeah. Uh, cervical disc hernia on my neck. Mm -hmm. And you might remember I have cataracts, I have uh, retinal membrane and all kinds of eye problems. So what can I do about, about this? I mean, I, it's not severe right now, I don't have pain. Look at my book. I of, have your book. Yeah, I have. Okay. And lie on tennis balls. Lie on tennis balls. Oh. You want to loosen up your whole back to affect your neck. So what we have done today, all of it is good. We're going to have it in YouTube. You can repeat the exercise again and again. But lying on tennis balls becomes very, very important in a case like yours. Stretching your neck becomes very, very important in a case like yours. And I think that uh, it would be nice if from time to time you will take your glasses off. It will relax your neck. I do. I, I normally take them off all the time. I, 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 bike my, I ride my bike now without glasses, thanks to you. <laughs> Wonderful. Wonderful. Nice to thanks see you. Thanks a lot. Nice to see you as well. Have a good day. You want to say goodbye, everybody? Goodbye, everyone. I, I really enjoy having you. Next time, we're going to still work on the neck to some extent. We're gonna work on the middle back mainly to support the neck as I was talking today in order to bring more tears to the eyes. If you can have two tennis balls with you and a broomstick, that's gonna be the best, you can do that. And um, I want you all to do the palming exercise before we start. And we'll do the palming exercise when we finish next week's session. Have a wonderful week. I want to tell to all the Jewish people, uh, have a good, uh, subscription in the book of life as we say in Hebrew I will fast this coming Monday uh, and this time not on water or on juice so uh, for all the Jewish people happy new year and for all the rest of you for me Jewish person happy new year to all of you talk to you soon